Welcome to the Better Plants podcast by BASF. In this episode, we'll be talking with Dr. Emma Wickabaugh and Jen Browning about tips for managing poinsettias. Hello, I'm Larry Elward, custom content editor for Meister Media Worldwide, the publisher of Greenhouse Grower Magazine. I'm talking today with BASF's Dr. Emma Wickabaugh and Jen Browning. Emma is a technical services representative for BASF and works in field development for the company's turf and ornamentals division. She holds a PhD in plant pathology from North Carolina State University. Jen is a technical specialist for BASF and covers the Western states for the turf and ornamentals business. She holds a master's degree in entomology and a bachelor's degree in horticulture from Oregon State University. Emma and Jen, welcome. Hey, thank you. Good to be here. It's good to have you. Emma and Jen are going to answer some important questions about controlling various pests and diseases when growing poinsettias. The first few questions are for Emma and are focused on treating for disease. Poinsettias are in production a long time, as you know, Emma. So when are the plants most vulnerable to disease? So cuttings are especially vulnerable, not only to disease, but you also have to worry about dry down. So it's usually a race against time to get them stuck before they dry out, especially because cuttings arrive in the middle of the summer when the greenhouse temperatures are pretty hot. So the unrooted cuttings are kept under mist for several weeks until they produce roots. So that high humidity coupled with young tender tissue really creates the perfect storm for diseases like botrytis blight and even um, bacterial soft rots that can quickly spread in production. So always inspect the cuttings when they arrive and discard any cuttings that are showing signs of water-soaked stems, or even leaves. We recommend that you use a preventative fungicide application at sticking to protect the plants through that propagative window. So using a product like Pageant Intrinsic Brand Fungicide gives you the protection against botrytis and some of your other fungal diseases. Plus, it comes packed with those intrinsic plant health benefits so the cuttings are gonna root faster and then they can be transplanted faster or earlier. After transplant, the biggest watch out is actually Pythium root rot. And so this disease can go unnoticed until it's too late and then the plants start dying. After color change, so late in the production cycle, that's when we can start seeing botrytis pop up again because we have those shorter days and those cool overcast fall conditions. So you kind of have a range of things you have to be on the watch out for. And it's all about, you know, constant scouting and taking a look at your plants. Emma, you mentioned that Pythium root rot can often go unnoticed. Why is this disease particularly difficult to control? So poinsettia plants are most susceptible to Pythium early in production, so soon after transplanting. And early symptoms of disease, so things like mild stunting, are actually easy, easily overlooked and they can be mistaken for nutritional issues or even irrigation issues, like maybe a plant you didn't water it. The plants limp along for quite a while before it's real obvious that you have a problem. But during that time, you have those diseased plants and they just keep pumping out pathogen propagules. So those spores that we call zoospores, they actually swim through the irrigation water to your nearby plant roots and then they can infect those plants. So all of those infected diseased plants just serve as a continued source of inoculum until they eventually die and then they're finally trashed. Another reason this disease is difficult to control is because you have very limited fungicides that actually work against Pythium species. So we're talking about a handful of chemistries that have any activity. And one of the most widely used active ingredients, it's called methanoxum. And unfortunately that fungicide resistance to methanoxum is widespread in the greenhouse industry. And that's from years of overuse of the same active ingredient because you just didn't have options. 
Some research out of NC State actually showed that over 50% of the pythium isolates found in commercial greenhouses were resistant to methanoxum. So it's a really common problem. And those resistant strains can become residents at your greenhouse, or they can be introduced time and time again on infected plant material. And so that means we have to be smart about which products we use and then when we use them to best manage pythium root rot. So those early applications are really critical to preventing the disease. And so we recommend that every poinsettia be drenched with a pythium specific product at transplant. And you're gonna wanna use your heavy hitters up front and then you rotate through other modes of action as you need it throughout the production cycle. So we've had excellent success if we start with a drench application of Empress intrinsic brand fungicide, tank mixed with a pythium specific product like Segway fungicide. And then you can rotate through some of your other products, things that contain etradiazole, so that would be terazole, phenamidone, or finstop, and you can even use methanoxum or subdue max. Just never apply the methanoxum as a solo application. You always want to tank mix it with another pythium product so that you don't end up losing plants to fungicide resistance. And really, to manage pythium root rot, you have to prevent pythium root rot because there is no cure once those plants are infected. So it can be a little tricky and hard to deal with. And sometimes Pythium isn't front of mind when we think about poinsettias or we think about, you know, the long-term production because poinsettias are in production from, you know, July through November. That's a huge window where you have to be constantly protecting those plants. Okay, thank you for the excellent overview, Emma. Now Jen is going to talk a little bit about some of the issues with insects. Jen, what are some of the insect pests from propagation through production? In propagation, points will face the usual pests of color crops. So they'll get fungus gnats and shore flies from those wetter conditions in the early stages of production. And then as they move through the cycle, growers will see thrips. Some will get aphids, particularly on that new early tissue because it's very nitrogen rich. And then there will definitely be white flies and then also some mites, so spider mites. And then there can be broad mites, particularly if they use spider mite specific chemistries and you wipe out the spider mites and then you can have a flush of broad mites right behind those. Some growers will have mealybugs and scale, and you'll see that particularly in ranges where you have more openings to the outdoors or you pull the sides up. That could be a little bit later in the season when you're starting to color up or just moving through that transition phase. By the end of the production cycle, when plants are being spaced out to fill out their canopies and finish coloring up, that's when the white fly pressure can boom again. So preventive programs that anticipate dry down cycles can protect finishing plants from last minute damage from the thrips, mites, and white flies that really round out the season for points growers. Jen, can growers still use biologicals and beneficials with targeted or conventional chemistry to treat insects? Absolutely, and that is the best way to approach it is that multi-pronged integrated pest management approach. So. If growers want to use systemics, so chemistries that are, say, in the group four or diamide chemistries that move through the vascular system to protect plants from bottom to top, they can start with those in the beginning and then stagger them throughout their program and production cycle for longevity. Then they can make foundational biological applications and or releases of macros regularly, say weekly is what we recommend with products like Velifer Bioinsecticide, that's our Bavaria Bassiana product, and that can be used throughout the production cycle. Then what they do is they can rotate in targeted chemistries that are compatible with beneficials. So that's products like Ventigra, which is Afidipiripin, Sultan Mitocide, which is Cyflometaphen, Distance, which is Paraproxifen, that's an insect growth regulator. It's really important to have an insect growth regulator, mite growth regulator in your program. Azotin O, the active ingredient in that is azadaractin. That gives you insect growth regulator, feeding suppression, really nice material to have in your program. And then products like tetrasan, which is a toxazole and works as a mite growth regulator. 
And then the other thing they can do is they can use broad spectrum conventionals where they need them, products like ultra pure oil, mainspring, other chemistries that have more broad spectrum activity to clean up other insects that come in or when pressures start to climb throughout the season. And this delivers a really well-rounded IPM program that addresses all the pests all season long. Thank you, Jen. Our last question, both Jen and Emma are going to speak to. Emma, you're up first. Where does sanitation or other cultural practices come in during the growth cycle? So sanitation and water management really are critical. So you want to throw away symptomatic plants as soon as you notice symptoms get them out of the production area so you're not just spreading more inoculum around. Um, Pythium thrives in wet, saturated media. So make sure the plants aren't staying too wet. You wanna pay close attention to those areas um, in the greenhouse that are lower or they have poor drainage. Those, are, those tend to be the hot spot for Pythium. Um, also, you want to watch your fertilizer use. So high salts can burn the roots and then Pythium can come, on, come in and feed off all that wreckage, feed off the dead root tissue. And so really, you know, just thinking about the fact that stress plants are oftentimes more susceptible to um, not only diseases and pathogens, but also insect pests. And so really keeping your plants healthy and all of your cultural practices in line is really important. And those hot spots for Pythium where it's wet and saturated are also hot spots for fungus gnats and shore flies. So keeping those areas a little bit drier and managing that pressure will also reduce your insect pressure. And then later in production cycle, when your plants are being spaced out and they're drying down more easily, you wanna watch for more sensitivity to sprays. That's the time when the preventive program that you plan right now will save you from having to make risky applications of heavy tank mixes with lots of products on board or products that might leave residue on beautiful, perfect bracts that are getting ready to ship. Thank you, Jen. Emma and Jen, thank you for taking the time to provide growers with this pertinent information about how to control pests and diseases in poinsettias. Thanks for having us. Yep, thanks. This is Larry Elward with Dr. Emma Lookabaugh and Jen Browning, and thanks for listening to this podcast.